Beacon Patrol. I've seen this around the interwebs. I was lucky enough yesterday to walk into my friendly local game store and I got a copy. We're gonna dive into it a little bit. We've had a chance. We played it four or five times already. The question is, will this be a staple in my collection and what use will I get out of it? So first let's talk a little bit about what Beacon Patrol is. This is a fully co-op game, one to four players. It plays pretty darn quickly. On your turn, you have a selection of tiles in front of you and it's your job to get those tiles on the board. There's a couple rules in that. They have to be adjacent to your ship marker, which we'll talk about in a second. They also have to share a common side, whether it be water or land. Each tile you lay, you have to be able to move your boat onto. And of course, boats don't move across land. Basically, you have to make sure that you're placing tiles in a manner in which you can sail to the next tile. We played this wrong in the beginning. I thought the game was fairly challenging, being able to place anything that made sense adjacent to yourself and then just have to move back onto another water tile. But that's not the case. You have to be able to sail onto the new tile. And that's where one of the really interesting mechanics of this game comes into play, which will help to make this game appealing to some of the more thinky gamers in your game group. You can trade one tile per turn with another player, which will help to open up some of your options. One other note are these movement tokens. This adds another layer of complexity and also mistake mitigation. See, you have these tokens that at any time during your turn, you can flip to move one space. So if you found yourself kind of in a corner where you can't play anything, it helps you get out of jail. It also will help you move across the map to maybe work on something else that your partner started to work on that you might have pieces for. And that's basically how you get the tiles on the board. But then the nuanced scoring is the other mechanic that I want to highlight here. Basically, you only score points if a tile you've laid is fully surrounded on all four adjacent sides. If it's a lighthouse tile and it's surrounded, you get three points. If it's a buoy tile and surrounded, you get two points. And if it's any other tile, it just gets one point. There's a couple other specialty tiles that are included as an expansion. I frankly think they're critical. I, I would probably just start playing with them. It's not that much more from a rules perspective. There's the windmills. They want to be surrounded by water. So like any other tile, if they're fully surrounded by anything, you get one point. However, if they're surrounded with open water spaces, you get an additional point for each one. So in this instance, we have three open water tiles and one that is not. So you score one for the windmill and three more for all the open water spaces. And the last expansion tile are piers. If you have these piers connected to your islands and it's fully surrounded on its four adjacent sides, you can count all the houses on that island as point. So you get the natural point for having a tile surrounded, but then you also get bonus points for having a big island with a bunch of houses on it. I played this with my 11 year old, also with my wife. I played it solo two and three players. All of them are pretty fun. It's really thinky. It's deceptively complicated, especially because you're only looking at three tile at a time. You're trying to look at other players tiles and see if there's something that you can trade with that would not hurt what they're working on. I found that balance really tough, especially when we started playing at the right way at the same time there's no rules overhead on this game it's super easy to teach throw this thing in a backpack play it in a park play it in a coffee shop i mean this is kind of the perfect coffee game you don't have to remember a bunch of stuff you're just playing tiles and trying to figure out a puzzle speaking of puzzles it replicates a puzzle in a lot of ways my wife loves puzzles i love thinky games so it made a lot of sense it was easy to teach to my 11 year old so like who's the game for I think it's beginners. I think it's people that love puzzles. And I think if you're trying to get your family or other people involved in board games, this is a really great kind of entry level game that has just enough to keep me engaged throughout the whole play. Will I play this every day? Probably not. Will I get my 20 bucks out of it? Absolutely. This is staying in my collection is going to be a key component when I'm onboarding new board gamers or trying to get my family involved, which I'm always trying to do sometimes to no avail. My teenagers are becoming less and less interested in uh, getting around the table and playing board games with their nerdy dad. But this is a great game. We're gonna play it all the time. I'm probably gonna get, you know, five or 10 more plays until we put it away for a little bit uh, because there's enough there to chew on and we really love the experience so far. If you made it this far, maybe think about subscribing. I have plans for all different types of board games here. And on that note, I'm out.